Hydroponics is space efficient, conserves water, and eliminates soil-borne diseases. But is there a low-tech solution for growing hydroponically? Is there a way to use hydroponics without pumps and electricity? There is, and this non-circulating hydroponics method is known as the Kratky method, named after the originator, Dr. B.A. Kratky. There are, however, some very unique challenges with this growing method. So let's explore the world of crack key hydroponics. Low tech hydroponics means we're thinking blue. So let's grow a blue thumb. The world of hydroponics includes a wide variety of system designs, most of which are recirculating systems that require some sort of pump to deliver nutrient rich water from a reservoir to the plants, which then returns back to the reservoir. These systems are great at growing a large number of plants with a single small reservoir, which allows the user to monitor and adjust the nutrients on a daily basis. This allows the nutrients to be tailored to the needs of every stage in plant growth. The real drawback of these systems is that they rely on electricity, backup power systems, and pumps that require maintenance. The real question is, do we need to rely on electricity and pumps to grow hydroponically? This is where non-circulating or passive hydroponics comes in. One of the most popular non-circulating hydroponics methods is referred to as the Kratky method, which gives credit to the originator, Dr. B.A. Kratky, who developed these systems at the University of Hawaii. These systems are based on historical experiments that showed plants could be grown directly in water by providing a humid air zone where the plants could grow very fine roots that were able to absorb sufficient amounts of oxygen for healthy growth. This means that the plant roots are divided into two primary zones. The upper zone includes roots that are suspended above the water, and these roots have super fine hairs that are focused on absorbing oxygen. The bottom zone includes the roots submerged underwater, and they are focused on absorbing water and water-soluble nutrients. So if this is a theory, how does the Kratky system really work? The Kratky system really works by allowing the humid air zone to grow over time as the plant absorbs more and more nutrient-rich water from the reservoir. Initially, the surface of the water is touching the plant growing media, which wicks moisture up to the seedling. But as the plant grows and transpires, the water in the root zone drops. This increases the size of the humid air zone, allowing more and more oxygen to be available to the plant. The design is incredibly simple. However, it requires a reservoir big enough to supply all the water and nutrients the plant needs to grow throughout its lifetime. Or does it? Dr. Kratky took this concept even further by demonstrating that a simple float valve and an external reservoir could be used to maintain a constant water level in the bottom root zone. This means that the requirement for a huge reservoir was kind of obsolete, and in theory, it allows the user to adjust nutrients for later stages in plant growth relatively easily. We are currently experimenting with how to grow peppers and indeterminate tomatoes using Dr. Kratky's float valve method. So far, we have been able to grow multiple heirloom varieties of each until they were ripe on the vine with no electricity and very low human intervention. We are currently struggling with extreme heat and low humidity in our growing environment. But it, throughout our preliminary trials, the plants seemed to get enough oxygen and water throughout the trial with minimal wilting when temperatures remained under 100 degrees Fahrenheit. We are eager to start new trials, exploring new plant varieties and focus on increasing our yields. We look forward to sharing all that we learned, all that went wrong, and all about the details of how we built our systems and videos to come, so stay tuned. At Blue Thumb Designs, our aim is to share free information on agriculture technology that we think is worth spreading so that we can become better stewards of this planet. In order to go green, we need to start thinking blue. We need to grow a blue thumb.